Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, uh, we'd left these guys tumbling back towards Kerbin from the moon, needing to rendezvous with the space station that is in low Kerbin orbit, but having only 37 meters per second of liquid fuel and oxidizer left, thanks to my fat fingers. We'll also be visiting a few other spacecraft, uh, the RMD, is my uh, D-Class asteroid chaser that I launched a few episodes ago. We'll be visiting it as it does a correction burn. And we have the launch of MAPSAT-5, uh, a mapping satellite that is on its way out to the moon. But the main thing is going to be, can I finagle these folks over to Kerbin Station? Also, uh, I do have a little bit of an announcement. Um, this is still the 1.1.0 version of Kerbal Space Program. The most recent version being 1.1.2, which I would love to install and I will be installing. But I've made the decision I'm going to be doing some adjustments to the mods that I have installed. Uh, mostly because a mod called Kerbalism really caught my eye. Um, I'm going to talk a whole lot about it because once I have it installed, we'll, you'll be seeing it plenty. But um, it basically combines a lot of life support and worrying about radiation and worrying about communication and worrying about repairs and worrying about lots of things and adding new. It also adds a whole lot of new parts um, into the game. Now, a lot of these things I'm already modeling through uh, mods like uh, attack life support and remote tech and also dang it um so this mod would actually replace all of those and in particular replacing uh attack life support is actually going to be a little bit interesting because uh, attack life support of course is the life support bot i have installed and it is integrated into all of my ships that are spending really anything doing anything more than just going into low curb and orbit including the Korean one that you see right here so uh what that means is, well, if that mod goes, this ship will likely go with it. So there's going to be quite a lot of changes to all of these ships and stations that are that I have in and around the Kerbin station. So what I have done is changed kind of my, my plan here. I currently have... Whoa! Well, that was just uh, my radiator. That just broke off. Wow, that broke off entirely too easily. I was actually trying to adjust my inclination there just a little bit, changing the inclination of my orbit by pitching myself a little bit towards the south so I could use some body lift on the spacecraft to try and change my inclination, and I just lost my radiator. It almost broke off like it was deployed. That was really, really weird. Oh, well, like I said, this ship actually is going to be gone in, uh, in the not-too-distant future um, because I, I've decided that uh, trying to take out the TAC life support and installing whatever life support comes with the Kerbalism um, while in space was just going to be too much. I think it'd be a simpler thing to just retire this particular vehicle and to uh, launch some new ones. So the mission now is going to be taking my 12 Kerbinauts that I have in space. Four of them you see here. Four of them are on, in low Kerbin orbit and Kerbin station, and another three plus one on the surface are in and about Minmus. That I want to get all of those Kerbals back. Once they're back and safely on the ground, I'm going to be upgrading to 1.1.2. Uh, a lot of these ships will then be gone, and then we will be getting into a new phase of the game. And I actually have a couple of other mods I'm thinking of adding that's going to change uh, a lot of the look of some of the ships and the environments here, but, you know, take advantage of the 64-bit uh, KSP version that we have now. I think I'll wait and talk about those as they install. Right now, the key thing is getting these folks back home. Uh, of course, what I'm doing here is I'm using atmospheric drag to try and reduce uh, my velocity, that's what I need to do in order to rendezvous with the station, and of course using the atmosphere to slow myself down does not cost me any fuel, and fuel is absolutely at a premium here. I'm also playing around, as you can see, with uh, Kerbal Engineer. Uh, specifically, I'm looking for some better thermal information to see how hot some of my parts on my ship were getting, but uh, 
nonetheless, actually, this arrow braking went without any incident, but I did want to remove that 2.7 degrees of inclination difference between me and curb and station. So once out of the atmosphere, I time warped out to the descending node, which was out near the apoapsis of my orbit, far away from Kerbin, so that the inclination change won't be quite so expensive. And I'm just going to do this inclination change uh, just with RCS, just with the monoprop, and try and save that liquid fuel for when it's uh, perhaps a little bit more critical. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. I should keep an eye on the amount of monoprop I have. It's not like... I have uh, copious amounts of that either, although I do have a fair amount. Okay, that's about 2.3 degrees. It is taking a little more than I was hoping it would. So I don't think I'm going to bring it all the way down to zero. There we go, about two degrees. You know, I think what I'll, do, I'll bring it down about another half a degree. I'll bring it down to about one and a half degrees. Um. I think that should help make my encounter with Kerbin Station a little bit cheaper. I'm hoping that this is a more efficient way to do it. I'm honestly not 100% sure. And I'll also be able to shave off a little bit off of that doing some, uh, some body lifting through the atmosphere on my next arrow braking run. This thing is going to have to do oh, two or three more, I think three more arrow braking passes before it's ready to attempt the rendezvous. But uh, rather than showing you that, why don't we get ourselves out to R&D, which is getting ready to perform the first of its necessary correction burns. Launched four episodes ago, the R&D is in pursuit of a near Kerbin D-class asteroid with the mission to maneuver it into an orbit around Minmus. But that part of the mission is going to have to be for later. For now, it is performing the first of what will likely be a few correction burns to reduce its closest approach distance with the asteroid. As you can see, I've got a bit of an oscillation happening as a result of the remote tech flight computer. No, 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 the heck with this. Yeah, the signal delay is only about a third of a second, so I'm just going to put it... There, we got the SAS back on. I'm just going to put it onto the maneuver node manually. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. No big deal. If I have a bigger signal delay, this would be a problem, but right now that's not a problem. We'll turn it so that the uh, solar panels are nicely exposed. There we go. As I mentioned earlier, Remote Tech is one of the mods that will be replaced by Kerbalism. It'll be interesting to see what the differences will be. I know that I will still have to get line of sight of communication and antenna pointing I know happens automatically, but I'll just discover the rest of it as I get to it. I actually like fumbling with this kind of stuff a bit and figuring stuff out for myself rather than getting into all the documentation and that. It'll be something to look forward to. One thing I don't think I will have though is the flight computer. Uh, but I don't think I'll have the signal delay either, so uh, not having the flight computer won't be a big deal because that's really only a necessity to do things like executing nodes and stuff like that. We are, which we are approaching right now, just a few seconds from node execution. There we go. My relationship with the remote tech flight computer has certainly been a love-hate relationship, for sure. There are things I absolutely, there's times I really love it when it works great, but when it doesn't work great, it can be really frustrating. I don't know what I think about not having that signal delay either. I mean, here where it's only about a third of a second, it's no big deal. But it is kind of fun working with the signal delay. Except when it comes to landing unmanned probes. That is a major pain. But anyway, our burn is just about there. And the flight computer has now switched that off. We'll put the thrust back up. Had the thrust right down because it was a really, really tiny little burn. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. It is bouncing around a little bit. Zoom in. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just under 500 kilometers now is my closest approach. It's about 14 days from now. So uh, what we'll do is I'll wait till I'm only a few days ahead of my closest approach and we'll tune this a little bit more. So. That's not going to be for a while yet. It won't be this episode anyway. So why don't we get ourselves back to the Korion, which is now completing its fourth aerobraking pass.
And with this pass, I was able to get its apoapsis down to 265 kilometers, which means it's time to time warp out to apoapsis and get this thing into a stable orbit and start planning our rendezvous with Kerbin Station. Now the station is in a 120 kilometer orbit, so I want to raise my periapsis up to that altitude, and it's there where the two orbits are going to be come together, so it's there where I'm going to be planning to have my encounter. And this is where my lack of fuel really is starting to come into play. I'm going to do this uh, maneuver entirely just with monoprop, as it's not a particularly time sensitive maneuver. But as you can see, this is going to take a little while, so why don't we cut towards the end of the burn, and if you take a look up at my monoprop, you can see that I have used up a significant portion of my monoprop, but I really don't see a way out of this. This had to get done. I had to get these folks down uh, into a stable orbit and get them ready to perform the rendezvous. Um, and as it turned out, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, they're going to have to do a few orbits before they're ready to do that rendezvous burn. So that gives me time to get to a launch. Here we have MapSat 5 on a lovely sunrise. Launch will be heading off in towards the sun, so things will be brightly lit soon enough. Uh, this is actually an identical satellite to one that is currently orbiting Minmus. Uh, mapping Minmus, mapping for biomes, mapping for resources. So this will be doing the exact same thing on its way out towards the moon. And whoa, 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 whoa! Oh my gosh! What? Whoa, whoa! I have uh, completely lost. Okay, okay, we got to cancel the script. Okay, uh, Control C should cancel the script. There, there we go. Okay, I got control of the rocket back. Okay, okay, we're coming down. So let's let's point up. <laughs> It start thrusting up again. Oh, this thing does have a lot of delta V. You know, no. Oh shoot. Okay, all that time I was still had the window selected for AOS window, so I didn't have control. There we go. Let's thrust up. Oh no, I'm losing. Okay, this this is done. <laughs> I've lost it completely. There's no way this is getting into orbit. Okay, let's let's at least get away from the launch pad. Get away from the launch pad. So at least when I lose this thing, which I inevitably will, I'm not blowing up the launch pad at the same time. That's my only goal. There we go. Okay. We are clear of the launch pad. Just, just cut the engines and let the inevitable happen. Wow. What the heck happened there? I'm going to have to figure this out. So I immediately went into Kerbal Construction Times simulation mode. We're just going to try this again and I will mention um, this is an identical vessel to one that I launched earlier with absolutely no issues. I made not a single change to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, do the exact same thing, I'm going to launch, run the exact same script, but we're going to put the uh, aerodynamic overlay on top of this and take a look at uh, what's going on. I suspect the fairing. That's the thing that, that, that uh, oh wait, that's the temperature overlay. I don't want that. Turn that off. There we go. Uh, aerodynamics. Yeah, it's on. There we go. F12, by the way, puts on this aerodynamics overlay. And we're just going to watch the aerodynamic forces on play. And what you may be noticing there is a really thick red line. There it is. The red line is drag. That is an obscene amount of drag up there at the top of the rocket. Yeah, that is, there's something wrong. That, that is completely not normal to see that much drag. So, yeah, this, this rocket is completely unflyable. So, uh... We're going to have to try and figure out how we can fix this. Now, as I mentioned, the first thing I suspected was the fairing. So the very next thing I did was to pop the fairing right here at the beginning. Oh, and squad, clamshell fairing toggle. Very nice. I love those clamshell fairings rather than that sort of confetti-style fairing. It's nice to have the option to put those on. But anyway, let's, uh, let's do the exact same thing and launch this guy without the fairing. So if the fairing is the issue... I mean, this is hardly 
an aerodynamic way to do it, but at least this will troubleshoot and narrow down what the problem is. If the fairing is the issue, this thing should be able to fly a little bit better now. So here we go. Three, two, one, launch. And again, we put the I put the aerodynamics overlay on by hitting F12. And oh, I'm starting to see it. Can you see that great big red line again? You can see it there dragging behind the rocket. Let's see what happens when it starts to pitch over. Oh, but this no, no, there's that, there it goes. Again, you can see that red line, that obscene amount of drag. But you know, looking at it now, I'm not that convinced that it's coming from the fairing. I'm thinking that it may be coming from the parachute. Right at the top there, I have an inline parachute right underneath the fairing base. And I think that red line might be emanating from that. So what I did next is I went into the vehicle assembly uh, building, removed that, and tried it without that parachute at all. All that parachute there is to do is to recover that booster. I can live without this booster being recovered. So let's see how this goes. Okay, I can see the struts are a little bit forked that are supposed to be holding down the payload. They seem to be glitched out of the fairing, but I can deal with that later. Now I just want to see, and I don't see the big red line. That's encouraging. Let's see what happens when it starts its gravity turn. There we go. Starting the turn and no obscene amount of drag. So it was the parachute. It was the parachute that was the problem, so what I did is I just put this thing back into the uh, vehicle or the uh, building queue with that parachute gone. I also unfortunately realized that I had a number of other vessels in uh, the building queue also with parachutes, so I had to uh, scrap those, take off the parachutes for recovering the boosters and stuff, and then just reset them into the building queue again. I guess it's no big deal because uh, it's gonna, they're going to be built in less time than it takes for me to recover my crew from Minmus. Remember, I still do have to do that before I can go over to 1.1.2. So uh, no big deal. We'll get this thing back in the air again. But let's, uh, let's put our attention for the rest of this episode towards the Karain 1, which still has to get itself over to Kerbin Station. Now just beginning its 77 meter per second rendezvous burn. Which you can see once again that I am using monoprop to do. But I'm thinking, you know, uh, I do have 38 meters per second of liquid fuel and oxidizer left. What I think I will do is use that to finish off this particular burn. Now you might be a little bit confused if, uh, if you were paying attention at the beginning. Actually, I had 37 meters per second of LFO left. Now I have 38 meters per second of LFO left and actually pretty soon you will see I will have 39 meters per second of LFO left. Um, I'm not cheating. <laughs> What's going on is, is I'm losing mass. As I use up my monoprop the mass of the vessel is going down and that means that uh, the fuel that I do have is capable of giving me more velocity, more delta V. But uh, what I think I will do is just keep going on here with the monoprop until I have about 38 or 39 meters per second left in this burn. And then we'll use up what remains of our liquid fuel and oxidizer. And then uh, we'll see if we have enough to get ourselves rendezvoused with the station. Taking a look there at uh, the monoprop reserves, I am now down to about a quarter what I started with and I still got to match orbits and velocities with the space station anyway uh, there we go that's about 39 meters per second left in the burn so uh, what I will do is it's only going to take a couple of seconds to burn off this LFO so I'll let myself get closer to the maneuver node and then we'll burn off the rest of this liquid fuel and oxidizer Oh, just a couple more seconds. 
Yeah, let's do it. All right, that's it. And then I'm just going to switch over to map view. I'll keep this locked on the prograde vector, but I think I got it. Yeah, I got it on the prograde vector. Well, it's not on the prograde. It's on the retrograde vector. I'm sorry, but uh, oh, how come my my nodes are nowhere near here? Well, that's a little bit strange. Uh, let's let's do some puffs with the monopropellant. I mean, that is clearly not where I'm going to be doing my rendezvous way out there. Oh, oh, there they are. Okay. Let's see if we can not dial these in a little bit closer. And oh, they disappeared again. Oh, okay. The heck with this. No, they're not. I don't. Okay, I'm not going to keep fooling around with the monoprop. I don't have that much left. I've got to be coming close when I come around to there. Uh, you know what? The heck with this. Let's uh, set an alarm. We'll just do an orbit. We should be coming in close to the space station. I just want to see what happens when I get past these, uh, as I expected. There we go. Okay, what's... Ooh, 7.8 kilometers. <laughs> That's less than ideal. Okay, well, I best deal with that now. You know, don't worry about me, maneuver nodes. Go ahead and mess around and flake in and out. I have all the fuel in the world. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Can't afford to be that picky. A little bit more. Okay, there we go. That's 1.6 kilometers as our closest approach. That's a lot better. And we have, oh my goodness, 62 of 280 units of monoprop left. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about this. I really don't know if I have enough. Uh, propellant left in order to match velocity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my burn to the absolute last moment. I'm going to also prep one of the Kuryuses that's attached to the station to make sure it's fully fueled and ready to go out there for a rescue because I think that is a, a high probability of happening here. And uh, I will also keep my closest approach from getting no less than half a kilometer. Uh, the absolute last thing I need to have happen is for the Karayan here to run out of fuel and go crashing into the station. So I'm going to make sure that if, if I run out of fuel, it's going to at least miss. Okay, let's orient ourselves over to the retrograde vector and see if we can close this distance down a little bit. Again, I want to keep it under half a kilometer. I've also switched this, or the playback is now at two times speed because this did take a little while. I don't want to bore you with it, but I do want to show it all to you because I think it was pretty exciting. So anyway, we are pushing that retrograde vector towards the right. Remember that it does have a tendency to drift downwards, so I'm not or towards the horizon. There you go. That's 0.6 kilometers. That's pretty good. Oops, that's my alarm for my closest approach. Don't need that anymore. Let's get ourselves a little closer here. Then we'll just start killing off our relative velocity. Or why don't we get ourselves out of map view? Let's see here, about seven kilometers away. Yeah, let's start burning. Okay, so let's start trying to kill off our velocity. The idea here is to kill off as much of our velocity, leaving it to the last moment. Um, that way, It'll make the, what I think will amount to a rescue. I mean, let's take a look at how much monoprop I do have left. Uh, even if I can get my relative velocity down to zero, I think the odds of actually getting a docking out of this are pretty slim. But the lower I can get my relative velocity, the easier that rescue is going to end up being. I'm also deliberately not pushing that retrograde vector. Okay, we're still 0.6 kilometers away. Or our closest approach is 0.6 kilometers. We're less than a minute from our closest approach, so that's great. Again, I want to keep that above half a kilometer, no less than half a kilometer. It's looking great. 
We are now under 50 meters per second for relative velocity, now under 2 kilometers from the station. If you take a look, just a sliver of monopropellant left. So we'll just use up the rest of this. Okay, still, yeah, our separation is still going to be fine. Getting close to about a kilometer away. Oh, this is it, this is it. That's it. Monoprop is done. We got it down to about 30 meters per second relative velocity. This should be all right. So let's quickly undock this Curuse. I don't have anybody in it, but it does have a probe core. So it shouldn't have any issues. Yeah, I can fly it around. <laughs> what if that if I couldn't fly it? But it does have a probe core hidden in there, so it should be absolutely fine. We're going to go over there and we're going to pick those guys up. And all we're going to do is actually just point ourselves straight at them. So I have the Karayan 1 now selected as a target. Oh, there it goes blowing by. Come on, let's go get them. Burn! <laughs> the chase is on. Let's go get them. All right, and I'm sort of, I'm watching that retrograde icon. I do want it to drift towards the target retrograde icon. Okay, I can see I need to burn a little bit more in this direction. There we go. And, oh, that is right on there. Excellent. We are approaching pretty quickly. Start putting on the brakes. Okay, now we are going to have to pick up the crew. We also are going to have to get that command capsule. That's Wilman's debris. We need to bring that back because we need to get that down to Kerbin's surface in order to fulfill the needs of that contract. And we want to do this fairly quickly because uh, all the while, while we're out here, we are drifting further and further away from Kerbin Station. If I end up too far away from Kerbin Station, then I might end up having to do a full orbit in order to get back to it. And, well, I'm an impatient man. Okay, we've gotten our relative velocity down to zero. We are also back down to normal speed. So I've just undocked the capsule. And then what we're going to have, I've already put Tamley in there. So she is going to orient the capsule... What is going on here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't have the... I got to just toggle the torque, I'm sure. There we go. All right, Tamley, let's let's turn the capsule around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, it's so twitchy when it's just a capsule. There we go. And uh, then we'll just dock with the capsule. And once we have these docked, we'll uh, get over Wilman and Bill. And then the very last person we're going to get over is Carol, our scientist, because Carol has to make sure to collect all of this scientific data that we have stored. Alrighty. So, oh, wow. Well, there is an ugly mash of text there. Yikes. Oh, well. Uh, well, she has her precious cargo of science, so now what we need to do is just get her over to the Curuse. Then let's check to see where the station is. Okay, by Kerbal Engineer, we're about 11 kilometers away. Yep, there is the waypoint. Let's just burn straight at it. I think we're close enough that we don't have to actually perform a rendezvous and go around the planet. Which is good. There, I can see my prograde vector coming up there on the nav ball. Okay, let's just burn straight along that prograde. Again, remember it has a tendency to drop towards the horizon as you approach your target. Okay, there we go. That's about 50 meters per second. Let's check where we're at. Oh, 0.7 kilometers, our closest separation. We're going to be there in just a few minutes. And then it's going to be time to get these folks back down to the surface. So as we say goodbye to the Karayan 1 for the last time, I thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time.